Beep, beep. Out of the way. Beep, beep. <laughs> that's, uh, that's mine and the dog's language for move out my way now, dog. So he does. That's good, Joey. What are you doing? He's a good gardener's pal. He just basically hangs around, following you around, really. So I'm in my shed. It's half past nine at night. Which is how we talk to the children when it's gone bedtime. At night. It's ten o'clock at night, just to make it very dramatic for them. So it's half past nine at night. Birds are still tweeting. The sky's pinking up a bit over there. It's still very light. It won't go dark until about eleven or half eleven. It's northwest England. It's really nice, actually. And... Although it's been a bit cold today, we've just come back from a dog walk, so I'm a bit warm and keep, seem to have perked up with the energy levels, really. So I am rescuing two of the final sunflower seeds that I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'll have a little go. I found them in the bottom of the packet and having realised that the seed packet was out of date, I um, abandoned all hope, but I thought, no, no, I'll just pop them into a bit of soil and see what happens and lo <laughs> we have uh, viable growth in the old sunflowers so I don't know what to do with them really I suppose I find a bigger pot and I pop them on so let's do that right what do I need a uh, trowel scalpel <laughs> Uh, compost pots. I know, let's find some terracotta, attractive terracotta pot that will look nice. There's one. And do you know what? I'm going to experiment. I've got a bigger one here too. I'll keep the bigger one outside. I'll take the little one inside just to see if in June a relatively young seedling can be left outside alone. Um, it's going against my better judgment, but do you know what? It's all about experimenting. Joey, what are you doing? What are you doing? No. Oh, I know. I know what that is. Joey, leave it. What he's got is an interest in my little... I say waste paper basket, but it's actually a bucket in the shed where I put all my stuff that can't be composted, stuff that needs to go to the bin. So without gathering loads of rubbish on the side, I just put it all in the bin and then sort it out later. And in it is the cardboard packaging of the fish blood and bone powder, which went in the bottom of the salvia. And I reckon that smells pretty good to Jerry, even though it smells reasonably rank to the rest of us. So I'm going to pop that up there. Out your way. Come on, out of the way. Beep, beep. Shift. <laughs> right. Sunflowers. Do you know what? Some people talk about... Or I've, heard, I've heard it said, I've heard it told, that sterilising your pots when you go to use them is a really good idea. What that means, I don't know, other than run them through the dishwasher, put them in a boil pan of boiling water or put dis, you know disinfectant on them which I don't really want to do <sighs> to get rid of seeds larvae larvae larva larvae larvae I'm not very good with my, I'm not very good with my language today I'm a bit tired now anyway so so I'm just going round it with my hand just to get all the you know spiders webs and that sort of stuff off tap it out without breaking the pot. Uh, maybe just break the pot, no mind. So everyone needs a bit of drainage for the bottom, don't they? Right, okay, so that's the big one with the big crocs in it. And this, I have two very efficient croc pot pots. So I've got small pieces for small pots, large pieces for large pots. I'm very pleased with that system. Oh, you come up with these little things, don't you? Right, okay, so a bit of compost and now we know from Delia about the importance of perlite I've now mixed a bag of compost and perlite so I don't need to do that every time that's all ready to go 
So I'm filling up the terracotta pot with a bit of compost. And I think what I've done in the past is really been quite strong and vigorous on patting down what goes in the, in the pot. And there's really no need to do that because I think it causes too much compacted soil. Tip the last of that bag in, it's finished actually. For the little little roots to flourish. And we don't want that for this, these sunflower seeds, do we? Right. Will that do it? Probably be good enough for now. Looks like it's been snowing, doesn't it, with all the perlite? Right, now, delicate operation to remove the sunflower seedlings without touching the roots or the stem down below because it's got beautiful hairs, little white hairs on. So I'll, it's sort of a bit of a leap of faith, really, where you pull using a leaf. And oh, that's just going to go in there. Little finger hole for it. And tuck it in. Aww. I think now the kids are a bit older. The nurturing doesn't need to take place in the home. It can take place outside the home. And you know what, the same is true if you've got kids or you don't, or you have a career or you don't, or whatever. You nurture things, don't you? I think most people have an instinct for that. And a desire, or it might be a pet or something like that. Plants are very similar, actually, I think. Mm, I don't like those little noises of tearing that happen. <laughs> oh, well. So this is number two. What's happened is I've got... I'm putting my finger in, I'm hitting the crocs. Just shove a bit of more compost on top. Oh, I've got a feeling that's not going to be big enough. Right, okay. Go on in there for a little while. Let's see what happens. It's not the best time to make a decision when you've got a little seedling dangling in your hand about which pot to go in and to try and divert to make a new one. But, you know, there we are. Uh, right, so those are two sunflowers. Little terracotta pot, large terracotta pot. I'm going to put them in saucers of water because, as we learned from a previous episode, the compost absorbs the moisture from the bottom, We've even without the roots coming through the bottom of the plant. Now, this has been revolutionary for me. It's changed the way. It's a game changer. Changed the way I garden. One, two, one, two. Testing, testing. One, two little saucers there for my... Oh, that's too big. Inappropriately matched, I think. Oh, God, I'm at that situation where I've got loads of saucers or trays out in the pots in the garden because it's summer. It's a good opportunity to catch um, rainwater. So I have nothing but either tiny, tiny saucers or really, really jumbo ones. So... Okay, well, what will feed a lot will feed a little, won't it? So, just have to stick with that. Okay, and I'm going to bob those down the floor because I haven't got enough room for what I want to do. All right, Jeremy, you're looking at those like you're eyeing them up. Where's my red watering can? Hmm? What have you done with it, Joey? Have you eaten it? Where is it? Mm, let's have a look. Oh. See, this is the thing about the garden. Your watering can is always at the opposite end of where you are. Or, or the item you need right there and then is always possibly like a 10 second, 20, 30 second walk, walk, walk away. So hang on. It's a, it's a little job, so I'll just use this slightly leaky watering can. Go around the back of the hover house to the water butt. Fill her up, Governor. You have to you sort of take your life in your hands around the back of here because there's a lot of mosquitoes hanging around the water butt. Having their water cooler moment. Right, let's have a look inside the water butt because it's been raining today. Oh, do you know what? That is joyful. Now, if you're listening in a dry place, I can only apologise for being a water show-off in the northwest of England because we have lots of it and it may sound sometimes to you like I'm being wasteful 
with my water but do you know what we do use a lot of water in England or Britain but we get a lot of water as well so we're very 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 fortunate right okay sunflowers do what you need to do off you go grow